Endeavor and ISS, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. NPR, this is Houston. Please call Endeavor and ISS for a voice check. Endeavor ISS, this is NPR. How do you hear me? Loud and clear, Scott. How do you have us? Ah, just fine. How are you, Mark? I am really good. Uh, Katie and I are enjoying enjoying a good day up here. Well, that's what we, that's what we want to talk about. Uh, Katie Coleman, Scott Simon, how are you? I am uh, great. It's nice to hear your voice uh, in this way. I listen to NPR up here. They send it up every day to me. Oh, thank you. Tell us about the mission. You've got some awfully expensive equipment on board. Well, yes, Scott, we just installed uh, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. It's a uh, $2 billion cosmic particle detector, really a premier uh, physics experiment that's supported by 16 different countries, 600 physicists. Uh, I mean, it's a big, pretty big project. It's managed out in CERN, Switzerland. Uh, they've been working on this thing, a lot of people, for a long time. And today, uh, with the help of Roberto Vittori, Drew Feustel, uh Greg Chamatov and Greg Johnson, we got it successfully installed on the space station. It's a great day for science. Katie Coleman, what uh, what do you do with your time up there? Well, I don't know where the time goes, but I'll tell you, it's a very busy place. We've got like 130 different experiments running uh, almost at the same time, some of them. Uh, up here on the space station, and then maintaining the space station, and also maintaining ourselves and uh, doing some some medical work, some medical experiments, um, just to maintain your bone mass. You need to exercise about two hours a day up here. So I would say every day is a busy day and a great day up here. How do you exercise for two hours a day in a space capsule? <laughs> well, you know. Um, up here on the station, you know, capsule you can think, you know, Soyuz, which is my way, you know, up to the space station and then um, back down next week. But up here on the space station, I mean, this is a big, big place. Scott and I are here talking, and nobody else. Are, oh no, I called him the wrong name. I, you know, I was up here for. <laughs> I was I was up here with Scott for four months. But you know, we're talking here, and nobody else in the station could hear us. Uh, you know, I, I practice my flute at night in a place nobody can hear me, and I'm not that far away. It's just, it's a very big, uh, big place and gives us a lot of space to both to store the stuff that we need for the experiments because they've all got different parts and, and different things that we need to, to, you know, to do the experiments. Mark Kelly, uh, first, you haven't switched places with your twin brother, Scott, have you? Not, not this time. This, um, this might well be your last ride in space. I wonder what your thoughts are as you look down on our Earth. You know, the Earth's an incredibly beautiful planet. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to understand sometimes all the, all the conflict in such, a, in such a beautiful place. You know, it is, uh, it's possible that this is my last flight. You know, this is a really hard thing to give up. It's uh, very exciting to, and, and it's a, to be frank, it's a big privilege for all of us to have the opportunity to serve our countries in this, in this way. So it's a, it's a tough thing. Uh, you know, but to, to answer your question, Scott, you know, just looking down, it's, it, it, we've got a very fragile and beautiful place to live, and we, we need to take care of it. Is, uh, I, do both of you, either of you, have any uh, concern that uh, NASA is no longer going to be leading the way? You know, I, I think, you know, NASA is leading the way and will continue to do so. Um, you know, we, we are the lead partner on the International Space Station, and when humans go back to the moon and on to Mars, I'm sure it's going to be the United States and NASA that's, that's leading that as well. Uh, as we move into more commercial uh, commercialization of, of the launch vehicles and getting access to orbit, that's still, you know, NASA that's, that's leading that project and hopefully buying those services. And this is something, I think, that in the long run, run could mean, uh, you know, the, really the expansion of humans uh, accessing space. So we're, we're pretty excited about the future for NASA. 
Katie Coleman, when you look down on the earth, what do you think? You know, you would think after almost six months that I might even be tired of it. And I will tell you that it's, it's always changing, you know, different kinds of light. Um, different, different. Just discovering new places. I feel like I've been to these places, and and in, during my time up here, we've had the earthquake and tsunami in Japan, uh, the conflict in in Libya, and and the flooding in the south. Lots of things happening down on the planet, and it's it's hard to look at in that way because when we look from here, it still looks beautiful and and somehow remote. And so trying to marry up those those two things, you know, the, the reality of how hard life is uh, down on the planet for so many people right now. And, and yet our view is very, uh, very angelic, really. And so it's hard to marry up those two things that I'm I'm not looking forward to giving that up. It's it's very hard to give it up. Light engineer, Katie Coleman, Commander Mark Kelly, thanks so much for speaking with us. Uh, you're welcome, Scott. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the NPR portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from the Associated Press. Endeavor Space Station, this is the Associated Press. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear, Marsha. How do you hear us? Just fine. Hello. I uh, was speaking to you today from your launch site, uh, Commander Kelly. Congratulations on a successful flight so far. I'll start out by asking about your wife, Congresswoman Giffords. How is she doing today? Have you had a chance to talk to her this morning, the day after her surgery? Uh, not yet. We've had a really busy day, and just based on the time, how our day matches up with the, the day there back in the United States, I haven't had that opportunity yet, but I will at the end of the day. I spoke to her mom last night, exchanged some emails with her uh, her surgeon and her chief of staff, and I talked to my brother yesterday, and she's doing really, really well, as good as possibly could be expected. Does her good progress mean that she might be released from the hospital soon, and do you expect them to delay her release until you're back on Earth? Well, the rehab is a, it's a long process from a traumatic brain injury, and it's not even, you know, measured in weeks. It's normally months. At some point, she will become an, an outpatient there at Tier. Uh, we don't know exactly when that is going to be, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm looking, looking forward to that. Uh, she's got some recovery here from the procedure she had yesterday, and then she's going to be back in the, in the full-time rehab. Uh We've seen some pictures down here of the towel damage on Endeavor's belly, uh, Commander. What's, what's the latest status on the damage? What are you hearing, and how concerned are you about that? Well, we've got a really, really busy day. We installed the alpha magnetic spectrometer today. That took a long time. We're getting ready for the first of our four EVAs tomorrow. We've been transferring cargo to the space station and some back uh, to the space shuttle. So it's been really, really busy for the 12 of us on board. So it's, uh, you know, constant contact about the condition with the, the few uh, tiles that are being looked at is something, you know, I'll, I'll get a chance later on in the day uh, via email and some messages to discuss that with the flight directors. Uh, but n but not yet. I, I I'm aware of the damage, and I know it's it's being looked at. We have a whole team of people that are you know that are working around the clock to take a look at it. From my point of view, the pictures I've seen, we've seen this kind of thing before. On STS-121, we had some tile damage. That was my second flight. Uh, it looked kind of similar. We took a closer look, and it was eventually cleared for flight. So I expect the same thing. Uh, well, good. Uh, for either of you, describe the elation and relief you felt once the alpha magnetic spectrometer was anchored down on the space station this morning. Were you holding your breath that everything would go right? You know, I had a, uh, yeah, a, a little bit. I mean, it's a $2 billion cosmic particle detector. It's got 600 physicists that have been working on it. It's a collaboration of 16 different countries. It's going to produce some really, really exciting science. And it was all in the hands of four of my crew members, two of them, Drew Feustel, Roberto Vittori from Italy, who transferred it from the shuttle payload bay to the space station arm. And then Greg Johnson and Greg Chamatoff installed it on top of the truss. So I said to, to Greg, 
and Drew earlier today in the mid deck that, you know, isn't it a relief that it's no longer our responsibility that we safely got it installed. Those guys did a fabulous job. And I imagine Dr. Ting and his team are collecting science right now. Well, thank you for taking the time to chat today. I'm sorry I didn't get to talk to you, Dr. Coleman. I ran out of time. So anyway, Godspeed to both of you. Thank you, Marcia. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Associated Press portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Reuters. Endeavor ISS, this is Irene Klotz with Reuters. How do you hear me? Uh, we hear you fine, Irene. How do you hear us? I hear you fine. Thank you. Um, thanks for taking some time for some interviews, and uh, congratulations on the AMS installation. It's a really fascinating experiment. Um, I'd like to start with you, uh, Commander Kelly. You've got the top two items crossed off the delivery list. Um, how are things looking now for the rest of the mission? And if you have to do a focused inspection, what impact will that have on what you want to accomplish there? Well, we um, it's nice to have the two of our well, our primary mission objective complete. That's a, that's a big relief to get AMS installed on top of the truss. I imagine Dr. Ting and his team are collecting some science now. That's it's going to be in operation for 20 years, and we're really expecting some, uh, you know, really fascinating results. Uh, ELC three is installed as well, so it is. You know, as you were asking, it's it's a pretty big relief, but we do have a really compressed timeline while we're here at the space station for another nine to ten days. We've got four EVAs. The first one starts tomorrow. We're working really hard to get ready for that. Uh, so we got a lot ahead of us. Uh, every day here is really, really busy when the shuttle's uh, attached, not for just the six shuttle crew members, but for Katie and the other five uh, space station crew members. Thank you. Um, also for you, Mark, I um, appreciate the comments about your wife. Um, in Congress, she was one of the last holdouts for Constellation and expressed concerns over the shift to a uh, commercial crew. Do you share those concerns, and do you think the country's moving in the right direction in space? Yeah, you're right. She was, she was a late holdout, you know, gave a speech on the floor um, in favor of, of Constellation. But at the same time, you know, she understood the importance of, of commercialization. She was looking for a balanced approach. And, you know, we haven't chatted about this recently, but I think she'd like the direction that, it, that it's going. There's some been um, some really uh, valuable tests that some companies have done that have been, you know, some pretty good results. And, you know, over the next few years, we're going to see you know, we're going to hopefully see some of these uh, new space companies do really, really well. And I know she's she's excited about that and looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, and for Katie, um, a couple questions for you. First of all, how's it been having these early risers as house guests? Is this a dual shift plan working? It's working out great. They were they were totally quiet. It was like any other morning on the space station. You know, I set my alarm and got up and realized that they'd been up for hours. But we have really great sleep stations that are very soundproof, and uh, and plus we work hard, so we're pretty tired. I think <laughs> so. It works out just fine. Good. Thank you. Um, how hard is it going to be for the remaining station crew members to uh, keep the outpost going, particularly with the shuttle crew aboard as guests? Well, you know, this, uh, this shuttle crew, it's like, you know, there's guests that are just not guests. Um, two of them have flown before on station, and all of them just have a, a really great attitude about working together. And I think that makes it a lot easier for the, four, uh, the three folks that will remain, uh, Ron and Sasha and Andre. And so, you know, it's, it, it is more work. And actually, Paolo and I, if you took our vote, we would stay and uh, make sure that we saw them off and, and then go back home. But uh, this is just the way the vehicles line up. And Ron's been here for a while, and he knows the ropes. And, um, it's, you know, I think it just turns into a bunch of people working together, making the best of it, and it'll be fine. Thanks. Um, how important are these uh, last EVAs by shuttle crew members for ISS operations after the shuttle's retired? Well, we've got a you know a number of tasks over four EVAs. Uh, we've got you know, on, on each EVA, as you probably know, we've got two spacewalking crew members outside 
for about six to six and a half hours, get, getting the space station in a good configuration to, um, to proceed without the availability of the space shuttle. We're going to fly STS-135 in June, hopefully. Uh, that's the current, or uh, July, rather. And, and then after that, there won't be any shuttle-based EVAs. But we have an airlock. We'll be going out the station airlock here tomorrow. Space station crew members are all trained to do EVA. And uh, we'll probably see some station EVAs in the future. But we're just, with our four EVAs this, this week and, and next week, we're trying to get the station in a really good config. Thanks. I'm told we're out of time. Good luck with the rest of the mission and uh, safe landing, Katie. Thanks very much. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Reuters portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Fox News Channel. Whether or not to confirm, UC Berkeley law professor Goodwin Liu he is up for a spot on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, but he is fiercely opposed by conservatives, and it appears the Republicans may have the votes for a successful filibuster. Byron York, chief political correspondent for the Washington Examiner, joins us now. Hi, Byron. Good morning. So they say that this confirmation fight could be more bruising than that of either Alana Kagan or Sonia Sotomayor. What do Republicans object to about Lou? Well, they think he's kind of the role model of left-wing judicial activism. He's a University of California, Berkeley. Good morning, Mr. Kelly and uh, Mrs. Coleman. Hello. Very, very liberal uh, positions. They are particularly liberal. Uh, yeah. Uh, Coleman, we have uh, got you loud and clear. Supreme Court Justice. Excellent. Thank you. Bill Hammer will talk to you in two minutes. He would plunge us back into the days when police could just shoot fleeing suspects and all, all sorts of other things. So they're, they're kind of offended, but I have to tell you, this is what goes around comes around. This goes back to 2003 when Democrats filibustered a whole slate of 10 Bush uh, Judicial uh, uh, Appeals Court nominees. Now Republicans are getting some of their revenge. So you're saying basically it's payback time. It absolutely is. Republicans were, you may remember, Republicans were outraged at this. This was really quite unprecedented for Democrats to, to filibuster a slate of 10 nominees. And they had some, one of these gangs, they had a gang of 14 agreement where they basically agreed to let most of the Bush, not all, but most of the Bush nominees through. And then they said they would only use filibusters in the future in extraordinary circumstances. But they left it up to each senator to, to define what extraordinary circumstances are. Now we've got a lot of Republicans Republicans saying for the first time that they are going to uh, filibuster an Obama judicial nominee. Mm, sure looks like it. We'll see what happens today. Byron York, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks. Hey, Allison, we're going to space. Right? Yay! All right, 220 miles above Mother Earth, the International Space Station, now circling the globe as Endeavor makes the U.S. second to last mission ever for a uh, shuttle program. The commander is getting some good news about his wife, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, back on Earth. And with me now, Mark Kelly along with Katie Coleman, a flight engineer, and um, I'm told to say the following. There is a bit of a delay here. We're very excited to have you both. But Station, this is the Fox News Channel. How do you hear me? Yeah, we've got you loud and clear. Yeah, we've got you loud and clear. Uh, terrific, Mark, and hello to you. How's Gabby doing, and what did her family tell you during the procedure? Well, our, our uh, flight day doesn't line up too well with the United States. We launched about 9 in the morning. I talked to her mom and her chief of staff and my brother late in the day uh, while, the, while her uh, surgery was still going on. I got an email from her neurosurgeon yesterday, and it went great, I mean, as, as well as he could expect, and she's recovering and will be back at the rehab, rehab hospital um, sometime today or tomorrow. Oh, that is outstanding news. I know you miss her, and I'm certain she misses you, too. You know, at liftoff, I was down there in Florida, and you said during liftoff, in part, you said, it is in the DNA of our great country to reach for the stars and explore. And then you said we must not stop. What do you mean by that, Mark? Well, I think, you know, we have a, a vibrant space program, but it's uh, not something I think we should take for granted. We're going to continue to operate the space station here for a, a lot of years through through 2020 and maybe beyond that. And my, my point is is that I think it's really, really val valuable to not only the American people, but everybody on the planet. So it's something we need to continue, focus on, invest in. Uh, it's It's really important. Uh, many would argue that uh, we should not end the shuttle program at the height of its success right now. And 
not rely on the Russians for a period that may last as many as 10 years. Um, you agree with that? Well, the end of the shuttle program is a bittersweet thing. I mean, the, the um, space shuttle's been flying for 30 years. It's been an incredible ship. It's done a lot for our nation. But it is about, the, it's 30 years old, and at some point we got to decide to move on to a new vehicle and a vehicle that we can one day use for exploration, and hopefully we'll move in that direction. We're building a heavy lift vehicle. We're uh, contracting with some private companies for some commercial capability to access low Earth orbit. And it's, um, you know, we're, we're, we're still still moving forward. Unfortunately, uh, we're not going to have a U.S. crewed vehicle for the immediate future, but that's not going to be forever. And we've had gaps like this before. Yeah. I know you have Gabby's band on your wrist and you're wearing the wedding ring around your neck. And uh, can, can you show our audience us that? And while you do that, Katie, I want to know what kind of a shuttle mate he is up there in the International Space Station. Well, this shuttle crew is great to have on board. Um, they they came right in and uh, got to work, and they'd made their plans really clear to us so that we could be part of what they're doing. And, uh, you know, they're just uh, they're great guests to have. They don't behave like uh, guests. They behave like family and it's uh I, I think we're doing some really important things this week with them and getting a lot of a lot of things done to make the station a place that we can do science for the years to come and so it's it's near and dear to all of our hearts to get that done and we're doing it together good luck to both of you thank you katie thank you mark back in a moment nice. thank you endeavor iss this is houston acr that concludes the event thank you all